want to tell you that men's fraternity basically will do three things for you. Here's the first one. The first thing it's going to do, it's going to be a place where you can talk openly, and I want to say openly and safely, about what it means to be a man. It's real important that we have a place where we can talk openly and safely. You know, every year when we finish men's fraternity, we kind of take a survey of what the guys experienced when they went through this year together. And uh, one of the things that comes out of every year that I think is so important is men will tell me this. They'll say, I discovered I'm not alone. And then there's laundry. Let's consider this excerpt from the following letter. Dear Dave, my husband announced one morning that he had discovered the previous night on the eve of a two-day business trip that he was out of underwear. Why he told me, I don't know. I never tell him when I'm out of underwear. <laughs> it's true, isn't it, guys? Anyway, he decided to remedy the situation in true guy fashion by washing exactly three sets of underwear thus disregarding the bulging hamper full of the rest of his underwear, which presumably he thought would wash itself. <laughs> Signed, Allison Schuler. Uh, do not do more laundry than they absolutely have to. Why is this? Are guys simply worthless, irresponsible scum? Yes. To give you an overview, to give everybody an overview, to kind of bring us up uh, to speed, let's just kind of walk through what the name of Men's Fraternity 1, 2, and 3 is. The name of Men's Fraternity 1 was called the Quest for Authentic Manhood. It's kind of a foundational level concerning manhood. Men's Fraternity 2 was a man at work and at home, focused on kind of two specific areas that predominantly are central to a man's life, his uh, career and his family. Then now here in Men's Fraternity 3, we're talking about a man and his world. It's, it's, it's what's out beyond that. And it's what's in his future. It's called A Man and His Great Adventure. You know, where the first one was kind of a ground floor, Men's Fraternity 2 were kind of the walls, and now we're putting the roof on the house of masculinity. The focus of Men's Fraternity 1 was a man's core identity. It deals with identity issues. Uh, just basic kind chief of elements in Men's Fraternity 1 was a man's wounds. It, it's looking back into his past and looking at the things that maybe misshaped part of his masculinity. And so we do a lot of probing in a man's past in Men's Fraternity 1. And we uh, give a definition of manhood, a place where guys can finally stand and do what I think most men in America still can't do, and that is if they were asked the question, what is a man? If you were asked the question, you guys who are here for the very first time, what is a man? Could you give us a succinct, passionate definition of it that you say, that's what I'm living to be? See, most guys can't. Most guys just draw a blank at that point. So Men's Fraternity 1, we give this definition of manhood and then we overview some basic manhood issues. The major challenge, if you were with us in Men's Fraternity 1, was this call that we made, the boy must die. Now, if you were in Men's Fraternity 1, you know what that means. But there comes a place where a man has got to put away childish things. He's got to move on in his life to what I call real masculine, real manhood issues. So the boy in you must die in Men's Fraternity 1. The passion of Men's Fraternity 1 was seizing your manhood so that you might receive all that God has for you.